This week we wrap up our three-part remake of the classic arcade game Joust. We're going to add an authentic splash screen, an enemy spawning mechanism, enemy eggs, and a whole lot more. Stay tuned. And welcome back to the Chromeworks Studio in beautiful Ottawa, Canada. I'm Andrew Tomek, your technology teacher, back with another great coding lesson for you again. So we are finishing up our Joust game. This is part three of a series. So if you're just catching up with us right now, you might want to go back and look at parts one and two. But um, so in part one, we got our main character moving around the screen, flying his little ostrich around. In part two, we set up the enemies and made them interact with our player, bounce off of him, and um, uh, made it so that they could kill you and you could kill them, and uh, everything's going quite well. So I'm going to be working off of a uh, catch-up file that has all the code that we did in parts one and parts two. I really recommend you go back to the beginning if you want to start building this project, but if you do want to jump in, you can download the catch-up file from my website or from you can find the description sorry the location in the description for this file as well so feel free to uh, grab that if you want to get started right now so we have a little bit of cleanup to do on a few of the objects just to add some little bits and pieces to it let's start off with our main character he's more or less done but he needs a little bit of code still to um make him die properly. I believe that we don't have the lost life um, code ready to go. So let's get started on that right now. Okay, so I'm uh, looking at my main character sprite here right now. And I am looking for an event that's called Lost Life. When I receive Lost Life, let's tell it what to do there. I'm just gonna find a little open space here and we can start coding. All right, so when that message comes across, which is when an enemy hits you with his lance higher than yours and you're dead, uh, we need to do a few things here. First of all, let's go uh, change our lives by minus one. Of course, we want our lives to go down. So let's go to our variables and change lives by minus one. All right, now we need to pick a random number uh, so that we can figure out where to respawn. So we're just going to pick a random location from one of three different spots, and then we'll respawn in that location when we die. So let's go set a random number. We'll go set a variable called random. And we'll set it to pick a random number from one to three. So let's go pick a, a random number right here. Pick random from one to three. All right, so the picking of location, we're gonna just do that inside of its own little block of code here. So I'm gonna create a custom block just called go to random position. Go to random position and we'll go okay. We don't need any parameters in there at all. All right, so we're just going to funnel off from um, this main block of code and just go over here and just figure out where it is we're respawning based on the random number we just picked. So we're going to say if random number equals one, let's go grab an equal sign from our operators. If random number, we'll find a bubble that says random. If random equals one, let's go to a position. So we'll grab a go to x, y, and the location for the first spawn spot is minus nine and minus 110 y, minus 110, there we go. Now, the second spot, duplicate. So if random equals two, 
and we're going to go to minus 202 and we're going to go to y of 1 and if random equals 3 we're going to go to the x of 136 and a y of 1 great so after we're done that, we can just zero out our speed so that we don't start moving again when we get to our new location. So I'm going to go set x velocity and y velocity. x velocity and set y velocity. They're both going to zero, so that'll just stop our guy from moving. Okay, we jump back to this block of code here and figure out what happens after that. So now that we've picked a random position, we're going to uh, set a variable called invisible, which will be, make you invisible to your enemies so that you won't be able to be hurt. It's going to make you invulnerable, really, rather than, than invisible. I think it's more invincible, I think, is the word that Liam was going for here. All right. We're going to hide here as well. So let's go to our looks commands and go hide. And we're going to play a sound called Joust Spawn. And that is, I don't see it here. Joust Run Skid Flap. OK, that's weird. It's missing. I wonder if it's, oh, here it is. It's inside the enemy. So I'm just going to drag it over from the enemy over to our main character. There we go. So let's play that uh, spawn sound just so you can hear it. That is the sound of your character uh, zooming into the screen. He'll um, it'll be just like the actual video game. He'll be um, he'll basically grow. Your character will grow out of the um, platform that he's on, and he'll be invulnerable for the first couple of seconds after he's created. So we're gonna um, start that sound. Let's go to start sound. Joe spawn. All right, so now we're slowly going to fade in. Let's go to our control blocks, and we're going to repeat 50 times. And we're going to change our ghost effect here to make us appear. So let's start, you know what, instead of hiding here, let's set our ghost effect. Then we don't have to hide. Uh, then we don't have to show and change our ghost effect. So let's go set. Now we have to go to our looks commands here. We'll go set, not color effect, but ghost effect to 100. So that will make him invisible. And then we can unghost him to make him reappear. So we're going to change our ghost effect. And. Uh, we want to do it by to 100, so 50 times means we have to go to minus 2. So over the course of this looping 50 times, he's going to slowly appear. And we just want to zero out his velocity now so it doesn't start moving right away. So let's go set x velocity to 0. And let's tell him again to go to a random position here. Really? Okay, we'll tell him to go to a random position. Okay, these two blocks actually have to go inside the repeat. I set that up wrong, just like that. So according to this, it's going to go to a new random location every time that is weird i'm thinking that that might actually be there by mistake let's have a look at it in a second when we retest though um let's go to our control blocks now we're going to grab a repeat 20 here and while that's happening we're going to set our animation to an invincible animation basically we're going to say that um so it's going to be an animation where he can't be hurt from. So let's go to our set animation tools here. We're going to go set animation name. And that's called Invincible with a capital I. I-N-V-I-N-C-I-B-L-E. The delay is 0 0.1. And the looping is 1. 
So that animation is right down here at the bottom, and I think it's basically just invisible. Um, so again, I'm not, I'm not sure why it's called invincible here if it's invisible, but okay. So we're gonna spend we're gonna basically when he's being recreated here is when we're not gonna be able to um, to be hurt. We're just gonna add a delay here. Let's go wait 0 0.1 seconds. And at the end of this, we're going to change that variable, the invisible variable. We're going to change it back to zero again. So set invisible back to zero. Okay. So I'm thinking this should probably work now, but let's give it a try. So to figure this out, we have to actually get ourselves killed. So let's just sit here and wait for someone to spawn and come by and do some damage to us. Come on down, my friend. Whoop. Okay, so the lava's not hurting us. Okay, so there's still a bit. Oh, there we go. And there we go. And I reappeared in a new spot. Let's try getting. Yeah, and I get reappear in a new spot at one of the spawn locations here. Let's have him kill us one more time. Well, I guess I'll have to go to them if they don't want to come to me. There we go. I do think we need a spawn noise in there, though. So, um, um, right here where we're re where we're reappearing, or where our ghost is reappearing here. That we're oh, we've got that spawn sound going already. It's weird that we didn't hear it. Maybe it's just because I'm not wearing my headphones. All right. Anyway, I think we're doing well so far. So that part is coded, and I believe that is it for our main character. He should be working basically the way that he's going to in the final version of the game. Um, now we are going to go over to the enemy. The enemy is pretty much programmed, except that he doesn't turn to an egg when he gets killed. So that's the next step that we're going to do here is... Uh, figure out the egg and how it's going to fly around the screen after he's been created. I mean, so after you kill your guy, he's going to turn into an egg briefly, and then you have to kill him before he respawns back into a knight again, essentially. So let's go to, um, so we've already created an egg block here, which we did last week. So we just need to tell it what to do here to start running properly. So let's go to um, set our animation for starters. So we want to blank out the old animations. Um, we're going to have to reset our animations here so that he's not, um, so that our character, our bad guy character is not stuck in his old uh, loop of flying around on his buzzard. So I'm just going to go blank name here, 0 0.5 de delay and looping of zero. All right, and that will just uh, re force the animation to restart without having to go back to the beginning of the animation loop again. All right, so in here we're going to say if is egg. So we have a variable here just checking to see if our guy is now an egg or not. So let's grab that is egg variable and we'll make it equal to, we'll say if it's equal to one, which means we are an egg. Then here's what we do. So if is egg is equal to one, then we're going to um, give our egg a velocity. So our egg works on its own little physics system, which we're going to be setting up in just a second. So we just need to, we've already created some variables for it. We've got a variable here called egg y velocity and one called egg x velocity. So let's go ahead and set that egg y and egg x. And so they're going to borrow those characteristics from the knight. So our egg x velocity is going to become our x vel, which is our um, our current speed of our knight, and our y vel is going down here, and that's again our vertical speed for our knight. So we're just setting those to uh, to match the way the speed the knight was moving at before. Now let's now that we've reset our animation, we can actually tell it to turn to an egg. 
and it will reliably do that. So it's capital E, G, G, delay is 0 0.5, and looping is zero, because it's a static animation that doesn't really do anything. So let's go zero. All right, so we need to, uh, so inside this if statement, we need a repeat until statement now. So let's go grab a repeat until and put it right underneath here. So inside the if statement, we're gonna repeat until the variable in our animation style here that's called E animation ended. And that just tells it that your, um, that your character has done his current animation. So um, basically that means he's, he'll, he will have turned back into a knight again when this is finished. So until he turns into a knight again, um, so, okay, first of all, we got to put the equal sign into there. So let's grab an equal to, and we'll say if E animation ended is equal to one. So let's go E animation ended is equal to one. All right. Now we need, while it's waiting to turn back to a knight, we need the egg to follow its own little gravity routine. So let's go ahead and make a new custom block called the egg gravity. There we go. And uh, we're gonna put that at the top of this repeat until loop. And now we need to set it up so this, this character will get killed. So this egg will get squashed if it gets stepped on by our character and this ostrich. So let's go if touching main character, that's over in our sensing, we'll grab touching mouse pointer and change it to main character. So if we're getting squashed, what's gonna happen? We're gonna change our enemy clones count. Let's go change enemy clones by minus one. We're gonna change our points. We're gonna give ourselves points here, of course. Change points by 150. That's what we get for squashing an egg. And we broadcast a message here. So let's go to our events and we're gonna broadcast a new message called egg collected. There we go. And that will um, make a little point thing go next to our, uh, the head of our old character so that we can see that we just earned 150 points. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Let's go uh, start a sound here. Let's go to our sound blocks. Start sound. Uh, egg collect. There we go. All right. And after that, we can delete this clone. We're gonna get the, uh, yeah, so this guy's dead at this point. Let's go to our control blocks and grab it, delete this clone. And that is outside of all, or no, sorry, that's not, that's inside this loop. But then at the very bottom here, after it's done its whole egg routine here, we're gonna set a variable called, we're gonna set is egg back to zero again to denote. So is egg is back to zero. So this is when he turns back to a knight. Once he finishes this loop, he'll turn back into a knight again. And then from there we can um, continue fighting him as a knight. Okay, we need to fill in the egg gravity. So let's go ahead and grab that now. All right. Oh, I'm still playing this game here in the background. Okay. So we're gonna start, gravity's gonna take effect on the thing and make it start to fall. So let's make it change its Y. We're gonna go change Y by our egg Y velocity. Here we go. Now, if we're touching the ground, which means it falls onto the ground. So if touching stage, which is our, which is our platforms, touching stage, so if it's touching a platform, we're gonna bleed off speed a little bit. Let's go change variables. Change egg Y velocity. Egg Y velocity by, hold it, if touching stage.
if touching stage. Oh, okay. I uh, I think I misread that. Okay, so if I'm touching the stage, we want to actually do a repeat in here. We want to repeat the number of times that's equal to the speed of the thing, because we're going to be losing our speed um, one step at a time. So we want to basically keep bleeding off speed one speed point at a time until we get down to zero. So let's go repeat a certain number of times. We'll go to our control blocks. We'll go repeat. Now the egg velocity, if it's moving in the opposite direction, um, could be a negative number. So we want to uh, get the absolute value of that number, which will turn the negative into a positive. So absolute value of egg x velocity. Sorry, y velocity. I'm going to need that x later, egg y velocity. Okay, so we're going to repeat around this loop, and each time we're going to change our y by 1. And that'll slow our egg's movement down a little bit. All right, um, and hold it. Oh, actually, I think I misunderstood what was happening there. So inside there, we need one more if statement. This is actually what's going to move. If we end up inside the stage, it's going to push us upward. This isn't going to slow us down. I think I misunderstood that. So we're going to grab another if statement. And we're going to say, if I'm touching the stage, let's go to our sensing blocks and go touching. Yes, yeah, so we need a touching stage in both spots. So it's going to continue doing this until he's no longer touching the stage. He's going to move up and continue moving up until he's no longer touching the stage. And at that point, he'll be out of this loop. And when he gets out of there, we can... Um, set his velocity. So we're going to have the velo y velocity bleed off here a little bit. So it's just moved up a little bit to accommodate uh, not being inside the thing. But now we, uh, I think at this point it might bounce and that's why we're affecting the y velocity again. So let's go set a variable. And so that uh, variable is going to go all right, I've missed an if else statement here. Hold your horses, guys. Not surprising, I guess. So I'm going to pull everything out of this if statement, basically the repeat block here. And I'm going to attach this set variable underneath it. And that's going to be set y egg y velocity. Two egg y velocity. We're gonna need the bubble for that. So we're basically gonna bleed off some speed here again. So we're gonna go egg y velocity times 0 0.5. There we go. All right. So here's where we need the if else statement. I'm just going to replace this if with an if else control blocks. I'll drop that drop this touching stage in there. And I'm going to put all of this stuff back into the touching stage. And that's it for the if. So in the else, we're going to say if not touching stage. So if not, and let's grab a touching stage from our sensing blocks. Oh, it's not touching color, it's touching an object, touching stage. There we go. If not touching stage, so if it's up in the air, we're going to change our velocity. So let's go variables, change, egg y velocity. Actually, we're going to uh, grab the same block from up here. I'm just going to duplicate this, and we're just going to make it bleed off uh, speed. Well, this should be minus 0 0.5 here, by the way. And this one should be minus 0 0.25. All right. 
So the next, so that controls is up and down speed, but we also need um, a um, block of code here that checks this horizontal speed because this egg will roll across the screen. So let's go to our motion blocks and go change x by egg x value. I think I have one of those up here. Yep. All right. And we're going to say if touching stage here again, if sensing touching stage all right so here's where we're going to do the same thing we're going to move uh, uh make sure that we're not inside of a um, block sideways so we're going to move back up a little bit if we've ended up sidestepping our way into one of these platforms so uh we're going to go uh hold it it's not set is egg what? I think I scooched over here too far and I'm in the wrong spot now. I should be in egg gravity. Where did egg gravity? Okay, there I am. So we're going to change X by egg X velocity. And I'm going to go if touching stage, we're going to repeat again. So let's go grab a repeat loop, control repeat a certain number of times. And in this case, we're going to do a little bit of complicated math again to basically uh, have it repeat the number of times that, um, that it's moving. Now it could be moving at a fraction. So we're going to use a, a block here called uh, the calculus block here. We don't use these very often. And right here, the one called absolute value, we're going to change that to say ceiling. So basically round up to the next number is what we're going to do with the ceiling here. So we're going to the ceiling of the absolute value of our egg x value. So if it's so if it's moving at a fraction like a speed of 2.5, it'll automatically assume it's a speed of 3, basically using the ceiling command. So egg x val velocity, there we go. And again, we're going to move backwards here in our x, but we need to just basically keep doing it as long as we're still touching the stage. So let's go if touching stage under our sensing blocks here, touching stage repeat uh no we just want to change our x value here so let's do our motion blocks we'll go change x by minus one times something divided but oh this is complicated again let's start by at grabbing absolute value of the new egg or the egg x. So let's grab an absolute value of the variable egg x velocity. Now we're going to divide this whole thing by the egg x velocity. Let's just go duplicate that. And we're going to multiply the whole thing by minus one to make it a negative number. So we're going to change x by minus one times. And um, this whole thing, we've done, the, done this a couple of times before. All this is going to do is give us a number that's either 1 or minus 1. And that will get our, our egg moving in the proper direction, either left or right, depending on its current velocity. So um, if we're moving to the right and it's a positive number, uh, then it's going to be... Uh, minus 1 times 1, which is negative 1, which will move it to the left. And if this is a negative velocity, then we're going to move it in the opposite direction. Okay, so we're just about ready to test this. Um, so we need to, we're still inside the first if statement. So just before the end of this, we're going to set a variable. Let's go to our variables. 
set egg x velocity to zero, and I'm going to go set. And after we're done all these loops, so after it's done moving itself, we're going to set the velocity to zero. That's going to push it away from the walls. And let's go set egg x velocity. And so if none of these if statements are true, if we're just flying through the air, we're going to slowly bleed off our horizontal speed. So if all these other things aren't true, we're basically going to set our egg x velocity to, let's grab a multiplication sign. We're going to slowly bleed off that speed by multiplying our egg x velocity by 0 0.95. All right, who's ready to test this out? Let's give her a try. Oops. And we'll try killing one of these guys and see what happens. There we go, right to the top. Whoa, killed myself right away. That is not cool, man. There we go, you're in my sights now. Oh, we got away. Darn physics. Oh, I'm horrible at my own game. Whoa, that was a little bit of weird clipping there. Okay, let's kill this guy. There he goes, and he's an egg now. He's flying around, and he is not falling properly. So there's something wrong with our code, obviously. The rest of it looks good, but it's just something in the way that we set up our Y values here. So I'll have a quick look at that, and I'll be right back. Okay, not sure what I was thinking as usual um, when I did this. I am back inside the egg gravity block here and um, I'm looking for these if not touching stage inside the else statement here. This is what the original code was that I had set up and that is not the way it's supposed to look. It's just supposed to bleed off some of the y velocity here. So change it rather than setting it and we don't need any of this math here. So we're just going to change it by minus 0 0.25. I can go ahead and trash that now. Let's test it out and you can see a little more realistically how these eggs are going to fly around. Okay, there you go, buddy. Yeah, and that kind of flies across the screen. And you have to catch it before it turns back into a knight again and wastes you. Whoa. There we go. Oh, I got that egg right away. There we go. And there goes the egg again. And I got that. Now I was looking at the final version of the game um, and it turns out that this lava isn't implemented in our final version of it. We're actually, I'm actually gonna revise the um, background here so that there's just a bridge all the way across. Now the lava is part of the original um, Joust game, but we decided since, since this project was getting so huge that we um, didn't want to implement some of the more complex features here that we're just going to, um, to add to this. So this is a little bit of a stripped down version of um, Joust. I'm um, gonna go ahead and just change that background right now. I'm just gonna grab a um, selection tool here. We're in bitmap mode because we've got a picture. I'm just going to grab a block here. I'm going to actually, first of all, I want to grab a color though. So let's grab that brown color from this piece of wood here. And I'm just going to draw a box here. And we're just going to draw the box all the way across like that. It's not quite right. Let's bring it down a bit. Make sure it's at the width of the screen here. That's good. And that way we'll be able to um, keep walking on this without falling into the lava. All right, I'm going to do the same thing here. There we go. So this is the way we need it, unless you want to go ahead and try and implement this these flames yourself. In the original game, you had the 
platform all the way across like this. And then after a couple of levels, the, the lava would rise and the fire would burn away these bridges, creating a hole you could fall into. And there was even a uh, monstrous hand that came out of the lava and tried to grab you and pull you into the uh, lava if you got too close. So that was one of the features we're not implementing today. The other one was the dragons. If you spend too much time on a level without killing off all the bad guys, then a dragon will appear on the screen in the original uh, game that um, that swoops across and tries to kill you, basically trying to get you to rush to uh, to finish the level as fast as you can so that you can hopefully die and put another uh, quarter into the machine, which was the whole point of these arcade games. They didn't want you playing for a long time, so if you were dallying too long, there's always some mechanism to get you um, speeding up here. Okay, so a few little bits and pieces to do here. Let's have those little point markers appear beside our head here. There's one for 100 points when we um, when we kill a bad guy, and there's another one with 150 points when we kill an egg. So let's go ahead and code those right now. So I'm going to code the one here that says 100 points, and let's start with that. So we're going to go when green flag clicked. We're going to hide. Let's go hide. Let's zoom in a little bit here. And we're just going to send it to a uh, location where it can sit invisibly waiting for us. We're just going to send it to minus 200, minus 200, where it'll be out of the way. This is kind of an optional step here. We really don't have to necessarily uh, do that because the numbers, until they become visible, we can't really interact with them. The numbers are quite large, so we're going to shrink them here. Let's just go to our looks commands and go set size to 25%, one quarter of the current size. Okay. So now when I receive a message called enemy kill, we're going to send the thing right to our main character. So we're going to use a go to command to have it teleport on top of our main character. Go to main character. Now we're going to have it go above our main character. So as soon as it appears here, we're going to change its Y by 30. That will move it above our character. We're going to create a clone of ourselves. So let's go to our control blocks. So that's just going to stamp down um, this number and tell it to go to the front layer. Let's tell it to go to the front here. Go to front. Okay, so what's going to happen is um, create a clone of myself, go to the front. Okay, so this thing um, isn't actually visible right now, right? Because it's remaining hidden. It's only the clone that's going to be visible here. So let's go grab a when I started the clone command. We'll tell it to show. We'll go to our looks here. Tell the clone to be visible. And we're just going to have it appear for two seconds. So we'll go wait two seconds. And then it will disappear. So we'll go delete this clone. All right, I believe the code for the 150 pointer is exactly the same. Yes, it is exactly the same, except um, the event that triggers it is egg collected, right? So I'm going to drag all of this code over to the 150 point. Then we'll go over here. Let's rearrange these. We'll clean up blocks. And we're going to change this last one here to, or this when I receive, to egg collected. There we go. All right, let's try this out and see if that adds a little graphical touch to the game here. Okay, bad guys. I notice their bad guys still aren't spawning. Oh, darn it! I thought I had him there. I have you now. Whoop! Oh, man. I am not good at this game, apparently. You'd think I'd be better at my own game. Whoa. Well, it's not really my game for starters. I'm teaching you how to make this game, but I want to remind you guys that it was my co-op student, Liam, who made this game. I thought he did a fantastic job. Whoop. Sorry, it's a Chromeworks game. I like to think of everything that Chromeworks made as mine, but I guess I have to give credit where it's due. Okay, come on, die already. Die! Oh, man. Still not getting this. Okay, come on. Up. Oh my 
god. Okay, higher, higher. Get the high. I have the high ground now. Ooh. And of course, I get killed again. Okay, maybe we should just fast forward through a little bit of this tape until I can actually successfully kill a guy. Man, I am sucking at this game. Whoa. Oh. Okay, I'm a little higher here. Oh my god. Okay, there we go. 150 points and 100 points. And let's kill this guy and get our 150. There we go. That's what we wanted to see here. All right, now I'm killing them all in a big tizzy. Let's finish this last guy off just to prove, just to regain what little manhood I had here. Beautiful. Okay, we killed both those guys, everyone. And now we're respawning and everything's good. I noticed that a respawning isn't working the way that we want it to. So that's probably the next step that we should do here. Let me just save my work. All right, so we're gonna go over to a sprite called the spawner here. Let's have a look at its costumes. So it's hard to tell because it's against white, but basically it flashes between white and yellow and this uh, buzzard grows out of the ground and then eventually turns into a knight. It's really hard to see against this background here. There's a couple of different options, one called spawn left and one called spawn right, depending on what direction you're created in. And uh, the rest is pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and um, code that part. So we're going to say when green flag clicked. Let's show. We're going to go to the, just have them hang out in the middle of the screen here. Go to zero, zero. And depending on which direction we're spawning from, we're going to move this around basically. So we're going to go forever in here. Control forever. If start game is equal to off, we're going to uh, hide it basically. So while our, we're looking at our cover screen, we're just gonna hide it. We're just gonna go to our looks commands here and switch costume. So if start game is equal to off, let's do that first. If we need an equal to sign here. Let's go to our variables. We'll find the one that says start game is equal to off. Then we're going to switch our costume to one called no spawn. And that one is basically just blank, I believe. Yep. Okay. So now we have three different places we can spawn, right? Spawn bottom, spawn right, spawn left. And they all are basically the same uh, command, just um, with some slight Actually, they're all identical code except for the costumes. Well, okay. All right, so let's go when I receive. That's under events. So when I receive, let's start with spawn bottom. When I receive spawn bottom, we're gonna start a sound and that spa sound is called the joust spawn. There we go. We're gonna switch costume to spawn bottom. Let's go to looks switch costume to spawn bottom. Then we're gonna repeat our next costumes as it goes through its various costumes to, uh, to grow out of the floor. We'll go repeat five times. And each time we're gonna go next costume and wait one second. So let's go to looks. We'll go next costume. And under our control blocks here, we'll go wait. 0 0.1 seconds and at the very end we're going to turn it back to a platform again so that's going to go looks switch costume back to spawn bottom that's the first one that doesn't look like much of anything okay so we just need to do the exact same thing and just changing the names so let's go duplicate so we're going to call this one spawn left and everything else changes. We're just going to change this one to spawn left. And this one here will remain spawn bottom. We don't have to get that to change. We're going to do the same thing for spawn right. 
We'll call this one spawn right. We'll switch costume to spawn right. And at the end, we can go back to spawn bottom again. All right, let's see what these guys look like when they're being created. We'll click the green flag here. And you can see it's a little bit cooler when they're being created here. You can actually watch them grow to the platform. There we go. Nice. There you go with another guy. Didn't get me this time. There we go. Keep getting those eggs. They're not flying away from me fast enough. There's one. All right, and that guy turns back to a knight again and wastes me. Okay. Looking good. What else do we have to do here? Well, we have to do our lives. So we need this little life icon at the bottom here to change to reflect our lives. As you can see, it's just set up with the, it's pre populated with all the different combinations of lives. We can have five, four, three, two, one. So all we have to do is do a next costume here every time that we lose a life. It's not very complicated. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go to our lives. So when I receive, oh, let's start with a green flag. When I click green flag, let's set lives to six. So set lives to six. That's five lives here, plus the one that's already on the screen here, basically. Set a life goal. Now that means that's uh, means that after 20,000, we're gonna get a free life, basically. So let's go set life goal to 20,000. That's the margin you have to hit in order to uh, get your free life. Let's set start game. To off all right and yeah so we're gonna hide these guys now so let's go to our looks here we'll go hide we'll go to front layer and we'll switch our costume to lives five, which is the original costume here with five lives. So switch costume to lives five. There we go. Now we're gonna do a forever inside here. Let's go to our control and grab a forever. If start game is equal to on, so it's gonna be waiting for the game to start. Control if start game. All right, I got a noisy kid there. Let me go and um, shut him down. Okay, so when our game actually starts, when our start game is equal to on, let's do that. We'll do grab an if statement if equals start game we'll grab that start game variable if start game is equal to on if our game is started then we're gonna show of course so let's go to our looks command then we'll go show and so here's where we do the extra life option let's go to our control blocks we'll grab an if in here and we're basically gonna say, we remember that life goal variable that we set up a couple of minutes ago. We're gonna say if our points are equal to our life goal and we've lost a life because we can't add, we can't create more lives here, there's no additional icon. So this is our maxed out number of lives and it's only if we've lost lives that we're gonna be able to get uh, ours back again. So it's regaining lives, it's not adding lives. Okay. So we need an and statement in here to code all of this. So let's go ahead and grab an and. On the left hand side, we're gonna say points are equal to life goal. So let's go into here. Let's go to our variables. Points are equal to life goal. So if we scored 20,000 points and we're not wearing costume five, 
So let's go to our, uh, we need an equal sign there. We're going to say costume name under our looks. So we're going to go grab this one here. This is costume number. Change it to costume name. If costume name and not, oh, this has to be a not, sorry. So I'm going to grab a not and I'm going to put this equal sign into there just like that. So for not wearing the costume called lives five, make sure you spell that correctly. So what we're going to do is change our life goal here. So we're going to create, make the next life goal at 40,000 points. So change a life goal by 20,000. And we're going to change our lives by one. That's going to give our lives back. Change lives by one. And we're going to go backwards one in our costume. So whatever costume we were wearing, we're going to make it the one before that. How do you do that? Well, you switch your costume to costume number minus one. And that'll move it backwards, basically. So costume number from our looks here. Costume number, where did you go? Oh, down towards the bottom here. Costume number minus one. Okay, switch costume two and we'll drop that into there. So that will bring us back to our previous costume. And in here, we're also going to have our game over event. So we're going to go if costume name equals a game over. So let's go costume name is equal to and game over. Make sure you spell it properly. G A M -E and capital G and capital O and game over. And we're going to broadcast a game over message at that point. So let's go to our broadcast under events and we'll go game over. We don't actually have a game over event here yet. So let's create one game over. Okay, so far so good. So that does it for the live. Let's just test that out here and see what happens. I'm pretty good at killing myself here. I've done something to wreck my character here. What the heck? Okay. I think that this isn't going to work now because we have set up our game over game start command. I think we have to get the rest of our background screens working to respawn this character again. Okay. Let's do that quickly before we test this. So we're going to over to our game over sprite here. We just have a little bit of code to do in here. Let's go under events, green flag. I'm pretty sure this will fix it, but if not, we'll have another look at the code. Let's go switch costume to joust bird one. Just resetting our costume back to the original. We're gonna hide at the beginning of the game. So the, the joust bird that we're talking about here is this game over animation that Liam designed. It's not the original one, but I just really liked it. It's quite cute here. It's the bird kind of falling off the screen here. So we're just resetting this back to its proper position here and hiding it. And then we're gonna have that appear when the game over happens. So when I receive game over, we're gonna go to front layer. We're going to show And here's where we're gonna reset our high score. So we're gonna go control if wave is greater than high wave. So we're gonna tr basically keep track here of whether we've reached a number of waves that we haven't last time. And also we're gonna track our high score. So we're gonna go waves is greater than high wave. If wave is greater than high wave, then we're gonna set high wave to wave. And that will make it that number. There we go. 
And we're going to do the same thing with points. So let me just duplicate this and we'll just modify some things. So we're going to go if points are greater than high points, high score, then set. Oops, I dropped that in the wrong place. Then we're going to set high score to points. There we go. So that's going to make our points equal the high score when uh, the t appropriate time arises. Okay. Um, what else do we need here? All right. So here's where we play through the animation. Let's go control, repeat until. Repeat until costume name equals the last costume here, which is, so let's grab a costume name. It equal to Joust Bird 11. I'm, this is some spelling issues here again. Joust space capital B bird dash 11. Make sure you spell it exactly the way that I do or the way that the costume appears in your own version of the game here. Let's go next costume and wait 0 0.2 seconds. There we go, there's our game over screen. What else am I missing here? Live spawner stage. We haven't programmed the stage yet. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm pretty sure something here is going to uh, fix our problem up with our main character disappearing. Okay, let's go ahead and program when green flag is clicked. Let's go, so we're gonna reset our points here. So let's go to our variables. We're gonna go set points to zero. Set wave to zero. Set start game to off. And set, uh, so we're gonna switch our costume to joust background two. Actually, we don't even have uh, any other costumes. I'm getting rid of the rest of these costumes, so there, there won't be a costume to switch. We're just gonna forget that. We're only use, going with the one costume here. Um, we're gonna make sure it's centered. So let's go to our motion blocks. We'll go, go to zero, zero. And we're going to hide for now. Let's go to our looks, hide. And then we're just gonna check and see. So let's grab a forever here. We're just gonna start checking to see when our start game gets switched to on. So let's go equals if. So we could do wait until here. This is a different way to do it though. So if start game equals on. We need to put that in an if statement. If start game equals on, then set ghost effect. Let's go to our looks, S or not, not set ghost effect. Sorry, we're just gonna go show here. There we go. All right, now where is the joust backdrop, the title screen here? Okay, so we have to do a little bit of coding inside our title screen here. So remember, we have this title screen appear at the beginning, and then when we press W, we switch to this lava background, and that brings up the other stuff. So I believe this is the last bit of code we have to do. Cross your fingers. So let's go to our backdrop here and have a look at the code. When green flag clicked, we're just going to play some music here. So let's go forever. If start game is equal to off. So let's go if equal to start game. So start game is equal to off, which means our title screen is playing. We're going to play the sound, which is joust title theme, this one here. 
Nice little old-fashioned 8-bit arcade sound. And of course, we're going to do a play sound until done here because it's just, otherwise it's just going to keep restarting this loop of sound. Okay. Um, now we need to do some fancy stuff, hiding our variables and stuff while this title screen is up. So let's go one green flag click. We're going to go to title screen. So let's go a little switch our costume. No, we're going to switch backdrop, not costume, because this is a backdrop. We're going to call it title. We're going to switch to title screen. Now we've got to hide a bunch of variables here. So let's go hide variable high wave. We need to hide variable high score. We need to hide variable wave. And wide, sorry, hide variable points. And we're going to set start game to off. And that's all we need there. And now we're just checking to see if our W key is pressed. So um, let's actually do a wait. And instead of doing an if statement here, we're just going to go. Yeah, we're going to say we're going to go wait until. Let's look at our control blocks. We'll go wait until. Uh, key W is pressed. So we're going to go key space and change it to a W. This is not the way it's coded in the official version of the game, but I just think this is a more efficient way to do it. Okay, what's going to happen here? We're going to stop this, the soundtrack playing. So let's go to our sounds. We'll go stop all sounds. We're going to start. Uh, we're going to do the start sound, which is this one. So let's start that sound. Joust start sound. We're going to set start game to on. So let's go to our variables. We'll go set start game to on. Switch our backdrop to game. So let's go looks. Switch backdrop to game. And we got to show all those variables that we hid. So let's do four more show variables. Show variable high score. Oh, well, we need a high wave anyway. We'll show high score, high wave, wave, and points. Let's do points because we're closer to that. And we'll go wave as well. So that will show all those variables. All right, cross your fingers. Let's try this game out again and see if it's working. Green flag. There's our music. Hit the W button. All right, we got some stuff happening here. So I'm going to have a quick look at the game. I think we should be done now. I think I've made a mistake somewhere. So let's go have a look and see what we did wrong. All right, it was a fairly simple fix. So I'm back inside my backdrop here under the green flag here. Um, for some reason, I, I said one thing, but actually dragged a different block in. So I had it say change start game by one, which makes no sense at all. What we're doing here is setting the start game variable to on. And as I thought, that fixes everything. It makes our um, it makes our ostrich reappear. It makes all the screen set up properly and everything is looking good from here. So um, let's just test this game out here and give you guys a look at the final thing. Oh, I showed some variables here that I don't need anymore. Let's go hide that start game. All right, so we are ready to go here. Let's give her a try. Green flag. I'll press the W key and start flying. Our guy should start spawning any minute. There we go. Let's kill one of these guys. Beautiful. I got him twice. There we go. There's 100 points. Let me get that second guy, 150 points, beautiful. All right, so the gameplay is working nicely. I'm going to let this guy kill me now. Let's see if I can manage to kill myself. <laughs> that didn't work very well. Okay, come on, I'm going to kamikaze into this guy. There we go. 
and our lives did not go down by one. Just one little couple blocks missing that I just forgot to do, frankly, inside this um, lives event. We actually don't have any code to make the lives go out. So um, there is an event we created here a little bit ago called When I Receive a Lost Life. And we're gonna go next costume. And that will just make us go through our different costumes. There's four costume, three, two, one, zero, like that. All right, let's give that one last test and I'm pretty sure everything's working nicely here now. So we've already tested everything else out. I just wanna kill myself here. Let's see how good I am at doing that at least. There we go, dead, and we have four lives. I'm just gonna kill myself multiple times here, dead again. It didn't work. Whoa. Ah! You think it would be easier to kill yourself in this game? Come on. There we go. Last life. Come on, you can do it. Night, bad night. Kill me. Oh, that guy just teleported through a wall. That's not good. Oh, man! Now when I'm trying not to kill people is when I'm winning these com combats. There we go. Dead. Oh, and this is my last life. Okay, I'm sure I can kill myself here. Come on, come on, my friend. Oh, come on! Nope. Yeah. There we go. Game over. And that quick little animation. I think we should probably add a little bit of a delay or something like that to that animation before it starts running here. Repeat until costume name. Let's go, let's just have it um, wait for one second before it starts to fall. I think that would just look better. Let's see what that looks like. We can simulate that just by going when I receive game over. Or let's play the game first, then I go game over. Doesn't work? Oh, there it is. Oh, it should be after the show. That was the problem here. Let's try that one more time. Hit W here, and then I'll click the game over. Yeah, and so you can see it a little bit before it falls over. Okay, beautiful. Well then, that looks like that's about it for this. So, um, that was actually a fun little game to put together. There was some complicated physics in it. I'm glad you guys stuck with me to the end. If you're watching this, you obviously have finished this. Um, please remix this game and uh, show me what you made with it. I'd love to see you guys change the characters around a little bit. You can, If you want to do something simple, you can even just play with the colors, uh, which would look quite nice. You can um, change the sound effects around a little bit. You could make new level backgrounds. So um, you could make platforms look like anything you wanted to here. You could draw them as long as you draw your platforms to be transparent, so the space in between them. You could create all sorts of really cool futuristic levels with this. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys make. There's a remix room set up for this and you can find the details for how to do that on my website at chromeworks.ca slash lessons. In the meantime, we'll be back next week with another uh, awesome new game. Liam, uh, our co-op student, is done with us now. His parting gift for us was a brand new game tutorial uh, for a game that he invented himself. It's called Ribbit, and I'm really looking forward to showing that to you next week. So until then, thanks a lot for joining me, and I will see you guys next time.